What is up, everyone? My name is Max Lowenthal. Super pumped to be with all you guys today. Um, I'm here to chat with you guys about how to maximize LinkedIn as a professional platform. A little bit about me before I jump into the presentation. I actually work at LinkedIn. Uh, I do monetization strategy and operations at LinkedIn, which is basically just like a fancy name for I help LinkedIn find new ways to make money. But my goal today isn't to help LinkedIn make money. I wanna help everybody on this stream understand how LinkedIn can be a really good platform. I personally, even before working at LinkedIn, have gotten every single job that I've ever had through the platform. So I'm gonna run through a little bit about uh, how to use LinkedIn and what it all, what's it all about. Um, and, and just to clarify, I'm just a guy who likes LinkedIn and who happens to work there. Um, so if you ever have any questions, you're welcome to reach out to me. Uh, in my free time, I actually do write about the video game industry for a newsletter called Master of the Meta, where I help break down the industry and what's coming. Last week, we wrote about E3 and Summer Games Fest and the earnings from some big companies. So if you're ever interested in hearing a little more from me about things that aren't related to LinkedIn, you can find me over there. But let's go ahead and jump in and I'll run through a quick agenda of what I'm looking to do today. So I wanna cover four things today. The first one is why folks should use LinkedIn overall and, and why I think it's a great platform and why I work there. The second one I wanna talk about is your profile, what should be on your profile, what matters, uh, what kind of information you should have on there. Uh, the third thing is I wanna talk a little bit about tapping your network, how you find the right people to reach out to, how you find the right jobs to apply to, things like that. And then I do have the Twitch chat open right next to me. I wanna make sure I'm answering some Q and A as well. So if anyone has any questions about professional development, career development, LinkedIn, me, how my day's going, if you wanna learn more about me, that's cool too. My day is going good in case anyone is curious. Um, feel free to hit me up and throw it in the Twitch chat and I will answer your questions at the end. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump in. So what's the deal with LinkedIn? Why does it matter? Everyone knows it's like this professional social media. Um, our, our goal at LinkedIn is to connect people to opportunity. And that doesn't only mean jobs uh, like some people uh, know about, it means connecting people to mentors, to leaders, to potential people they can market to, advertise to, sell to, uh, learn from. The, the, the company is really all about helping you become a better professional and find more opportunity in your life. And uh, that, that's one of the things that really drew me to working at the company overall. To set the stage, um, LinkedIn has tons of information on it that it's really useful for you to be able to use for your own professional development. Uh, these stats are actually even a little old, so these numbers are, are higher, but we have over 675 million people on the platform, over 50 million companies, a million plus jobs, skills, schools, knowledge. Basically, what I want to talk about today is how can you use all this information that LinkedIn has available for you in order to help build out your professional brand, in order to help build out your professional development and sort of who you are on the internet. Um, before I do that, I want to jump into LinkedIn as a business because I think it's important to understand you know, how we're running things behind the scenes. So LinkedIn has four major ways that we make money. We sell products that help people hire. We help products sell products that help people sell, that help people advertise, and that help people learn. So on the LinkedIn side, we're a company that's owned by Microsoft, right? We're working with other major companies in order to be able to help them use these tools through LinkedIn. The one I want to focus on today and the one that we're the most known for is our recruiting products. So it's referred to as LinkedIn Talent Solutions. You might hear me call it LinkedIn Talent Solutions, Talent Solutions, something like that. But these are all of the products and all of the tools at LinkedIn that help you find a job. And this is what we're most known for. But LinkedIn can also do all of this other stuff. So if you ever have questions about any of these other things, hit me up, definitely happy to help out and happy to put you in touch with the right people. But I wanna spend my time today talking about the recruiting, the hiring and the jobs. So with that, let's jump in a little bit deeper. I want to start by talking about the LinkedIn profile. And that seems to be the thing that everyone is the most familiar with. It's the place where all of your information lives. It's the place where you really can represent yourself the most. And I want to talk a little bit about why the LinkedIn profile matters first overall. The thing about the profile is it's connected to everything that we do at LinkedIn. So you remember those four businesses I talked about, sales, marketing, learning, hiring, all of those products allow people to get a more granular look at people's LinkedIn profiles. These profiles are really this sort of hub for who you are on the site. Whenever you comment on something, people look at your LinkedIn profile. Whenever you apply to job, apply to a job, excuse me, people look at your LinkedIn profile. So it's super important that you're building a really strong profile. The four sort of key examples that I think profiles are useful for uh, are jobs, hiring, building personal brand, and connection. 
So I'm, I'm going to run through each of these and, and sort of why I think these things matter in relation to your profile. And I have a couple of examples, I think, uh, sort of help crystallize these for folks as well. I know they helped me understand why LinkedIn profiles matter. So first and foremost, as I think everybody knows, uh, all of our hiring products on LinkedIn optimize for your profile. So if you apply for a job on LinkedIn, the person on the other side of that application gets your profile. Uh, if you advertise or post something on LinkedIn, the person on the other side of that uh, post or on the other side of that advertisement looks at your profile. So when someone is looking for someone to hire for a job, they're gonna go look at your profile. That's the number one most important thing. So you wanna make sure that you put a really solid step forward in order to represent yourself in the best way possible. Let me give you an example. For a while before I did business strategy at LinkedIn, I was actually a recruiter. And I recruited product marketers for the company to work on some of our uh, some of our B2B SaaS tool products. The first place I would go whenever I was looking at anybody who could potentially come work at LinkedIn was their profile. Did they have a profile? Was it filled out? Did it tell me anything that their resume didn't? This profile was super valuable resource for me. And the people who generally had more filled out profiles were overall easier to get a sense of what type of candidate they were. And those people were more likely to succeed when I was recruiting for them at LinkedIn. So it's really valuable to have it from a job perspective. The second thing I want to talk about is hiring. So let's say you're not applying to jobs on LinkedIn, but you're already in the process of interviewing for a job. So for example, you know, you have done a couple interviews and you're about to talk to the last person. It's the make or break interview overall. People who are going to interview you will come look at your LinkedIn profile. They'll come and review it. They'll say, what is this person about? What can their LinkedIn profile tell me? that uh, you know, maybe I don't get from their resume or from their interviews. So people will check it even if they're not using LinkedIn as the profile or the platform, excuse me, with which they wanna hire you. A really good example here is that actually when I was recruiting for the job I have right now on LinkedIn's monetization strategy team, the day before my interview, I was interviewing with three people and each of those three people came and looked at my profile and each of those three people asked me a question about something that was on my profile. Now, of course, it's not surprising that people who work at LinkedIn are looking at LinkedIn profiles before they interview people to do jobs at LinkedIn. You know, it, it makes a ton of sense, but I've had other jobs at other places, other technology companies, other non-technology companies as well, and they're all looking at your profile before I go into that conversation. And I'd recommend the same to you. If you're gonna go have a conversation and interview with someone, it might be worth just taking a look at their profile. Maybe you can find a way to connect with them. Maybe you can find a way to relate to them better. It's really good just sort of check in your process whenever you're interviewing. Them. The next thing I wanna talk a little bit about, which I'm sure folks are familiar about, this idea of having a personal brand on LinkedIn. In my opinion, LinkedIn is a super underutilized content platform. And what I mean by that is every time you like something, every time you comment something, post something, share something, every time you do that, it goes out to everyone you're connected to's feed. LinkedIn really wants to show that you're an active profile and an active user. So when you do anything, all of your connections can see it. And when your connections see it, the first thing they're gonna see is your name and they're gonna click on your name and go to your profile. So Overall, it's really valuable because LinkedIn is this crazy underutilized content platform. And you're going to post stuff. People are going to say, oh, what's this person about? In my case, like, what is this guy about? Why does he write about video games? Why does he work at LinkedIn? They're going to go click on my profile and learn a little bit more about me. So it's great for personal branding. A quick example here, and, and I'll, I'll pick up the speed a little bit. I used to run a newsletter called The Pause Button uh, before I worked at Master the Meta, which is the current newsletter that I support. Uh, and I would post things about the pause button on LinkedIn. And every time I posted something, I would get people who'd come and look at my profile and then they'd go subscribe to my newsletter. They'd say, oh, this guy knows what he's talking about because of what I see in his profile. So I'm gonna go listen to what he has to say and follow the things that he wrote. It was really useful for personal. The last thing I wanna talk about is the uh, overall ability to connect with people on LinkedIn. The ability to you know, stay in connection with coworkers, friends, find mentors, basically everything you do after you leave a job. Uh, and it's really good to be doing this sort of all year round, not only when you're looking for jobs overall, but it's still a really useful um, platform for this sort of process. The example that I wanna give is when I actually reached out to somebody who works at Unity, which is the company behind a really popular game engine and sort of like backend game infrastructure system. I thought Unity was a super cool company, so I reached out to somebody at the company, shot them a message, and I said, hey, you work at a cool company. Can we have a conversation? And I'll talk a little bit more about the strategy there. 
but I shot them a, a message. They looked at my profile. They said, wow, this guy's profile seems legit. And they responded and I got to have a conversation with them. Ultimately didn't end up leading to a job, but if I ever want to work at Unity, I now know somebody that I can connect to. So profiles are really valuable overall. I want to talk a little bit about what matters for a really good profile. And there are a couple of things I would absolutely call out. The first one is having a picture. And you can see the slide uh, here, right? More connection requests, more profile views, more messages. A photo uh, is a great way to make yourself seem more approachable and be able to connect with more people. The other thing I would say about this picture is you generally want to maintain some sense of professionalism. You'll see in the example, it's a clear centered headshot of somebody so you can see exactly who they are. Maybe a selfie with your friends, maybe that picture from the night out at the bar that you post on Insta or Twitter. That's probably not the best picture for LinkedIn. What you want is a clear, concise, sort of straight up headshot for your, uh, for your LinkedIn profile. The thing that matters the next most is your industry. This is sort of your headline. What do you work in? And when you give LinkedIn this information, they start to show you people who work in the industry that you work in, right? So I get more video game people on my LinkedIn profile because I say I work in gaming overall. Um, so the company and the platform sort of help give you that information more. And by the way, when people are searching for you on LinkedIn, when they're searching for people to hire or people to connect with, they use this as a search filter. Uh, according to our data here, right, 300,000 people search by this filter every single week. So it's important that you have it filled out. The next thing, and, and arguably, I think the most important part of a profile is having a really good summary. And like the slide says here, this is kind of like your elevator pitch. It's, it's the information that you couldn't fit on your resume, but that your profile lets you do and lets you expand upon a little bit more. Um, one of the key things I want to really double down on uh, when it comes to a summary is having keywords in there. What are the words that matter the most to the job that you have? So I work in monetization strategy, right? Or I do monetization at LinkedIn. So for me, keywords are go to market, business operations, monetization, right? These are like words that people expect someone with my job to have. So I try and include them in my summary overall, but this is really the meat in the first place. People look outside your picture when they're coming to check out your profile. The next most important part, in my opinion, is your work experience. So when you're talking about your work experience, you can upload a position for your company and the title you have, but the real benefit is you can add a couple more sentences about the job you do. In a resume, maybe you can only do one or two bullet points about the job. But with a LinkedIn profile, you can add two or three paragraphs with a couple sentences in them. And that helps give you that extra nuance to sort of vocalize and show yourself. I've gotten the question before where people say, well, maybe I you know, don't have a traditional professional job, and so I shouldn't put it on my LinkedIn profile. I would totally disagree with that. I think it's awesome to vocalize and share any kind of job you have. Folks come from a variety of different backgrounds, and it's really great to show that you are working and that you are making progress and investing in yourself professionally overall. Um, and, and we can talk a little bit about specific examples in a second. I already see a comment in the chat that, um, that I think is like really relevant here. So I'll keep moving forward, and we can, we can circle back on this. Uh, the next and sort of underutilized part of this process is adding examples of your work. People don't do this very often because they actually don't know it's a feature, but you can upload pictures, you can upload videos, PowerPoints, links, things about your, what you're doing in your day-to-day -day job. And when you upload those things, again, it gives people more nuance to the kind of work you do. So for example, you know, back when I interned at a technology company in college, I uploaded a picture of me and my intern class doing lots of other intern things together, right? Showing people that, you know, I can work in a team. I uploaded a PowerPoint presentation that I made and said, hey, you know, like I'm able to build presentations and build strategies and things like that, especially if you're in the creative industry. So you do production, video, audio, um, you know, art, design. This media upload section is going to be your best friend to show yourself visually overall in the work that you do. Uh, the last thing I'll mention is, well, this may not be the last thing, but one additional thing I'll mention to all of you is adding volunteer experience. I think it's super important to visualize yourself as a realistic person. Like everyone, I saw a comment in the chat about this. We're all like real people, right? We don't want to be like these buttoned up, super professional folks. Adding volunteer experience, if you have it, is a really great way to show people the kinds of things that you care about kinds of experiences that you have outside of the workplace. And it makes you seem like a more holistic person, right? The purpose of your LinkedIn profile isn't to be some like stodgy suit, like businessy type person, even though it might seem that way. The purpose is to, like show who you are professionally on the internet. And volunteer experience is a really good way to do that. So 
again, to summarize the things that matter most on your profile, and I'll touch on these in a second. Uh, picture a industry and concise headline. And I'll, I'll show you an example here on the next slide. But I mean, again, a quick descriptor of who you are. So someone can look at your headline and say, uh, oh, great. I know everything Max is about. Your summary that we spoke about. And again, fill with substance and content, not just buzzwords. Put in keywords for the job you want. Put in numbers and metrics from the job that you've done. That's all super important. Your job experience, of course, this is the meat of your profile. I really recommend not pasting bullet points from your resume. Take some time and write some sentences and add some nuance. Uh, add some work samples, some media. The thing, this is really, like I mentioned, the thing to make your profile stand out. And finally, add some keywords. Recruiters search for you on LinkedIn using keywords. We have a tool that lets them search for the profiles for the people they're looking for. Go to the job you want. Maybe the job description says you need game development experience, free to play experience, user acquisition experience. Put those words in your profile, assuming that you have the relevant experience. Of course, you don't want to lie, but put those words in your profile so that people who you want to find you can find you easier. I really can't double down on this enough. Keywords are super important. Um, let's run through a couple examples. So I have an example of a concise headline and a photo up in the top left corner. It's actually from my own LinkedIn profile. So you'll notice when I talk about the photo, it's you know just me, just the headshot, very professional, very standard white background, very easy to follow. You know exactly who I am from LinkedIn. And you'll also notice my headline says exactly what I do. I do monetization at LinkedIn. And at the time, I was the co-editor of a newsletter called The Pause Button. So you can get everything you need to know about me just from looking at this tiny section. That's really how you should be thinking about your head. Now, talking a little bit about what a good summary looks like, I actually pulled this summary from someone who's on the leadership team of this organization. And you'll notice that they have tons of really valuable things in here. They have numbers, they have direct names of experiences they have. And the thing I really like the most about this profile is they have a tiny section right at the bottom of the slide that says, things I love, gaming, cooking, esports, events of all sorts, cats, right? To me, this comes off as two things. One, I now know a little bit more about this person, which is cool. I like cats too. I would love to talk to them about cats. Maybe they have one, right? But this has a seeky se uh, second interest, right? In that this person now just introduced more keywords that they care about into their profile. So they now have gaming, esports, events, and this person works in gaming, esports, and events. So it's really useful that they add those extra keywords overall. Again, you want to do it in a way that feels natural and organic. You don't just want to shove a bunch of keywords in there, of course, but this is a really smart and unique way I thought of doing this. The other example I want to show actually comes from a guy named Ryan Wyatt, who's in charge of gaming content over at YouTube. And he's someone who I look up to a lot, and I think he has a really, really stellar LinkedIn profile. So you'll see at the top right a couple things. One, his description of his job is full of keywords. He has things like gaming publishers, content creators, global strategy, content partnerships. These are the types of things that someone in his role should have done. So he has those keywords in there. But the other thing that I want to call out is that if you see in the blue box right there in the middle of the screen, he has work samples. He has interviews that he's done. He has videos that he's done, photos of his experiences, right? I can get a really good sense that Ryan is somebody who's pretty senior because I can see the opportunities that he's had to speak and to present and things like that. So it's a really, really good overall built out job description. Honestly, like this is better than the job description on my profile. So kudos to Ryan and kudos to Chris who wrote the summary in the bottom corner. Moving on a little bit about, uh, I wanna talk a little bit about tapping your network overall. And this is, you know, once you have your profile built out, how do you go and find the people that you want to connect with, right? LinkedIn is all about connections and professional development and, um, you know, networking and things like that. But doing that in practice is actually really hard. Um, so once you've taken the time to make a really good profile, what comes next? So let's talk about that. Uh, the first place you should go on LinkedIn, in my opinion, and these screenshots might have changed over time, but the search bar is still always in the same spot. The first place you should go on LinkedIn is the search bar. This is your guide to the website. You can search any, you can search anything. It's like Google, right? You can search anything on the site. You can search a company, a type of job, a person, a school, literally anything. And the search bar is so great because it gives you a curated list of places to start looking. So maybe you want to work as a game producer, but you're not really sure where to go next. If you search game producer, LinkedIn will give you jobs for game producers. It will give you profiles for people you can connect with. It will give you companies that are hiring, right? It's the best place to start overall. 
And the other secret benefit that a lot of people don't know is the more you search, the more your LinkedIn feed learns about you and who you are and what you care about, because it has artificial learning and machine, machine learning and artificial intelligence, excuse me, um, involved in the product. So when you search game developer, LinkedIn goes, oh, this person cares about game developers. I should show them that more on their feed. So it really can help you overall get a sense of your bearings on the site. The other thing that's really useful is when you know someone who is, you know, maybe career you want to emulate. For example, on last slide, I talked about Ryan Wyatt. I could go and use the search bar to find his profile and look at it and say, what has Ryan Wyatt done in his career? What do I have to do to get there, right? It helps me find potential managers, people I want to model my career off of. It's just a great place to start on the platform when you don't know where else to go. But let's say you found somebody. You found someone who you really want to reach out to. You want to make a connection with them, maybe just to have coffee, maybe just to learn about their job, maybe because they're hiring. What do you do now? And the answer is twofold. You can uh, send someone a message or you can try and find a connection to them. And if you're looking to find a connection to them, the best place in order to find them is on their company page. So let's say I want to work at YouTube, or I want to find some way to be connected to somebody at YouTube. In this case, I have Evil Geniuses as an example up. I'll go over to Evil Geniuses page, and I'll click on the People tab, which I have circled in green right there. And what that's going to do is let me search through their employees. It's going to let me find, hey, how do I find someone who I want to be my mentor? How do I find someone who's connected to the person I want? And by the way, it's not just Evil Geniuses that has this page. All of the schools that you potentially have gone to also have this page, but instead of people, it's called alumni. And when you search the alumni tab, you can find someone who went to the same school as you, and you can connect with them, you can reach out to them, maybe find mutual connections overall. So this page, again, is a great place to start if maybe you don't know the person you're trying to emulate or the person you want to connect to, but you do know the company. So when I personally am looking for jobs, for example, I make a list of all the companies I want to look at or work at, and I go to these pages and I look at the alumni and I look at the people that work there and I'm like, do I know anybody? Can I get in a conversation with anybody? Because overall, a warm introduction to a company is a better way to get a job than just randomly applying. But let's say I go to Evil Geniuses and I found a profile that I want to reach out to. What do I do now? There are, as I mentioned earlier, two options. You can DM someone, you can literally slide into the DMs on LinkedIn, which I'll talk about in a second, or you can send them a connection request, which is kind of like a friend request on Facebook, but it's a little bit different. Let me talk about that too. So first, sliding into the LinkedIn DMs. LinkedIn has a messaging system, it's called InMails, that lets you send almost like an email to someone on LinkedIn. And you'll see an example of one on the right. I went ahead and shot someone a message with a subject line, with a quick introduction, description, and I got them to answer me, and ultimately I got ended up getting coffee with them. The benefit of LinkedIn DMs is that it's the best way to message on LinkedIn. We as a company want you to use this tool because this is what it's there for, right? The easiest way to message somebody, and it's also the way that gets the most visibility. Whenever you send somebody an in-mail or a LinkedIn DM, they get an email in their inbox. We really want folks to come open these messages and use this platform. They also get a notification on LinkedIn.com. So overall, this is a really great way to get people to answer you and to get connections. Now, of course, there are a couple drawbacks, I would say, if you're just trying to use this randomly. One, this costs money. It costs money to send a DM to somebody on LinkedIn. Um, it's part of our premium subscription. So you might have to shell out a couple bucks in order to message somebody. And, and that's okay, sometimes it can be worth it overall. I'll talk about a free option in a second though, if you're a little more price conscious. Uh, the other thing I would say is that people sometimes don't check their LinkedIn inboxes. So they might miss it. You know, maybe people aren't updating their profile as regularly as they should. So maybe they might miss your message. The other thing I will say is that the inbox is also the place that messages from other people outside of you are coming from. So if someone is looking to talk to a recruiter about a job on LinkedIn, that's going to come in their DM inbox. If they're going to get an advertisement, that's going to come in their DM inbox. So you're competing with other people, other messages, advertisements to get that person's attention. But if you really want to get someone's attention on LinkedIn, there is no better way than sliding into the DMs, which is like the most absurd sentence ever. But I promise, I mean it. It's worked for me before as well. Now, what, what's like a good DM on LinkedIn? There are sort of four, let's call it four key things that matter. The first one is a clear and concise subject line. You can see at the top, I have hoping to talk to gaming with an expert, right? It shows what I want to do and who I'm trying to talk to. And it's also kind of complimentary. Um, the other thing I would say is that I go in and I make a quick introduction, right? So I come right out of the gate and I say, hey, I'm Max, I work on this at LinkedIn. 
Here's what I do in my free time. Here's why this person should care about me. Then I really quickly get to my ask, right? I'm not really superfluous about it. I make quick, quick introduction. I say, hey, want to talk to you and see if you want to get lunch or get coffee. Here's why I want to talk to you. You've had a great career and I want to pick your brain on how you did it. And then finally, I'll close with, you know, scheduling, make it really easy for this person to work with you. So again, clear subject line, quick introduction, quick description of why you're reaching out to them and making it easy for follow-up is definitely the right thing to do. So let's go ahead and talk about the free option outside of sliding into the DMs, which is sending someone a connection request. And again, you can see an example at the bottom. Someone sent me a connection request and they happened to go to the same school as me. They used that alumni tab that I talked about earlier and they said, hey Max, I'm a fellow alum from Washington University in St. Louis where I went to school. I'm working on a tech platform and I could use some help with some connections. Can you help me out, right? So this person sent me a note alongside their connection request. Now, a couple of benefits about this connection request thing. First off, it's free. You don't have to pay for it. That's awesome, right? It saves you money right out of your pocket. The other benefit is if you send someone a connection request with a note and they accept it, that message that you see down there at the bottom instantly goes into their DM inbox. So it's super, super useful to be able to send a message alongside because you instantly get a conversation starter um, alongside your accepted connection request. And also, once someone accepts your connection request, all the messages you send between each other are free. You don't have to pay for it anymore. So if you're able to send a good connection request with a good note and they accept it, then you can go back to the DMs like I just talked about and do this whole process for free overall. So you don't have to worry about it. So it's a huge benefit to send connection requests. Now, a couple of things to think about overall in terms of character, excuse me, in terms of drawbacks for connection requests. Uh, one, there's a character limit. You can only send so many messages on a LinkedIn connection request, whereas a DM, it can be as long as you want. For a connection request, you can only send a couple hundred characters. So you wanna be really punchy and valuable with your ask. Secondly, it is a lot easier for a lot of people to send a lot of connection requests. So yeah, you might've been competing with recruiters for the DMs, but now you're competing with everybody for connection requests. So as a result, it can be a little bit tougher to notice. Um, something to think about as you're thinking about how you want to reach out to people, how you want to connect with them. But overall, again, to summarize, you have your DMs. They cost money, but they're the best way to get to somebody in LinkedIn. And you have your connection request message like you see at the bottom. And by the way, it's really easy for me to just hit accept and get into that conversation. So in my opinion, if you know somebody, if you are financially constrained and can't go for LinkedIn premium and do the DMs, a connection request is also a good way to go. So I want to finish by talking a little bit about jobs on LinkedIn and how to get a job because a lot of people don't realize that the site has tens of millions of jobs or millions of jobs, excuse me. We're getting tens of millions. We're almost there. And it's a really great place to look for opportunity because it's, it's so confusing to search through. So I, I would say there are sort of three key components to what it means to do jobs on LinkedIn. And let me start by giving all of you a little bit of context on LinkedIn. In my opinion, and some of the data does support this, LinkedIn is the best place to get a job online, period. There are other options that are Indeed, there's Glassdoor, and there's ZipRecruiter, Monster, all these other things, right? And, and LinkedIn is the best place to get a high quality job. Indeed, for example, is optimized for contracting work. Overall, Indeed is, is primarily more focused on gig work and LinkedIn's gonna have those more long-term professional jobs. So you're going to be able to find, in my opinion, better opportunities on LinkedIn than on LinkedIn. Now, Glassdoor, which I'm sure some of you are familiar with and where I actually used to work, um, is also a good option, but they don't have as many job postings as LinkedIn. You know? Maybe if you don't want to hedge your bets, you could look over there. But if you're really looking to maximize your opportunity and your chance, Glassdoor is not going to be as great as LinkedIn. And these other sites, Monster, ZipRecruiter, things like that, those are primarily job aggregators, right? So not only do they have their own jobs, but they pull in jobs from other places, right? Most, if not all of the jobs on LinkedIn, there's some that come from external places, are primarily housed and led on LinkedIn. They're native to the platform. So if you go and apply to a job on LinkedIn, which we'll talk to in a second, they'll be able to see your platform and it'll just be a lot easier overall. So in my opinion, LinkedIn is the best place to look. Now, three things you really need to know about jobs on LinkedIn. One is job alerts. The second is what happens when you apply and view to a job. And the third one is save jobs. So let me start back at the beginning of job alerts. Uh, 
in my opinion, and some data tends to show this, being the first one to apply to a job makes a huge difference, right? Folks may not say it is, but when I was a recruiter, we would move the early people who applied to a job all the way through the process. And of course we would pause and wait for other uh, candidates, but it is really useful to be the first person who gets to apply to a job because you're gonna be the first person in front of the recruiter, the first person in front of the hiring manager. And the best way to do that is to use job alerts on LinkedIn. So you can turn on alerts for special kinds of jobs or special job titles or jobs from a company. And those will let you know the minute that a job is posted. So to give you an example, maybe I'm interested in being a product manager at LinkedIn or a product manager at Google. I love working at LinkedIn, but let's say I wanna do that. I could set up a job alert for our product managers at Google. And every time Google posts a job on LinkedIn or Blizzard or Activision or, or any other company, so to speak, um, I'll get a notification and I'll get to know about it and I can be the first person to apply there, right? And considering I've invested all this time in making my profile look really good, they'll see my profile after I apply and they'll give me an interview, hopefully. Um, so job alerts are a great way to be sure you're the first person out of the gate. Uh, talking a little bit about applying for jobs and viewing jobs, even showing a little bit of interest is enough to land an interview somewhere. So for context, when you look at a job or apply to a job, the person behind that job can see who you are, right? They, they wanna see who's interested. So it's really important to be going through jobs on LinkedIn and clicking on them, looking at the qualifications and applying if you want, hitting the apply button, or that's an apply that lets you send your profile or apply that takes you to another site, right? Because that shows someone that you have a demonstrated interest and that you wanna come work at their company. So it's worth getting job alerts and also being the first person to view or apply a job. Now. The last thing I wanna talk about is saved jobs, which is this concept of bookmarking a job for later if perhaps you're not ready to apply to it or for another reason I'll touch on in a second. The benefit of saved jobs is that again, you're teaching LinkedIn the kind of jobs you want. So if I see a job I want as an associate game producer at Riot, right? I can go ahead and save that job and now LinkedIn knows, hey, I should show Max similar jobs to associate game producer at Riot because he saved that or he applied to it or he set up a job alert to it, right? These are jobs he cares about and I want him to get the job he wants because that's good for LinkedIn, that's good for our customers and that's good for the applicant. So I'm gonna start showing him more jobs. So it's in your interest to save jobs and set up alert and give LinkedIn this information overall so it can help you get the best job and the best opportunity um, overall. So I'm gonna pause there. Uh, I just threw a bunch of information at everybody overall. So I would love to, I have Twitch chat right here next to me. I would love to answer some folks' questions if people have it. You can find me over on Twitter. You're welcome to connect with me there. Uh, my name, uh, my handle is just my name, at Max Lowenthal. You're also welcome to connect with me on LinkedIn. You can find me at linkedin.com slash in slash Max Lowenthal. Although my one request is if you send me a connection request, like we talked about, please add the note to it. That way I know who you are, you know that I that you heard me speaking here. And also it's good practice for you. Um, and if you wanna learn a little bit more about me and the work I do in my free time, you can go over to the website, www.masterthemeta.com. That's the newsletter that I work for where I write about the strategy of games. I take what I've learned from LinkedIn, professional development, in the world of video games. And I work with this team at Master the Meta to put out content every single week. Uh, we write for thousands of people at some of the biggest gaming companies, the biggest investors, you know, everywhere you've sort of heard of before. So you should feel free to come check us out in our free time if you're looking to learn more about the gaming industry or just want to hear more advice from me overall. So I'm going to pause there. I'm going to take a look at chat, which is right down here, and I'm going to answer some questions really quick. So looks like we have a question about the length of the summary. So there's a question from the channel that says, is there a recommendation for the length of a summary? I'm gonna go ahead and jump back to that slide super quickly um, to show you what I'm talking about. So give me just a moment here. If we look at this example from Ryan Wyatt in the top right corner, you'll notice a couple of things. One, again, he has the media, and two, that he has it split into discrete paragraphs. So my recommendation is one to two paragraphs, about two to three sentences each are plenty, right? It should be more than 40 words, but it shouldn't be so long that it's an essay. One thing you'll notice about Ryan is his description, his summary is so long when it comes to his job description, that you have to click see more. The same thing applies to your summary as to your job description. There's a certain point where if you post too much content, there's gonna be a see more button and people won't be able to naturally see it when they come to your profile. 
So in my opinion, I think it's super worthwhile to do two to three sentences, two-ish paragraphs. You can do a little bit more. You'll see Chris in this example has two sentences, three paragraphs. I think that's plenty, but you don't want to write an essay that people don't have to read. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the next question. Um, Wanulu says, I don't know if you're familiar with this, but do you have any advice for people who live in Latin America to use LinkedIn a better way? Like getting a job for the US because there's little opportunity here to work in the gaming industry. Yeah, I think it's a really, really good question. And um, and it can definitely be tough to get an opportunity. It took me, I applied to LinkedIn, I think three or four times before I, I even ended up working here. So it can be really, really hard to find these opportunities. My advice to you would be to go ahead and look at this connection feature that we discussed, right? Can you make warm connections with people who can help you get your foot in the door? Because just cold applying to jobs is really, really difficult and often puts you at the bottom of the pile uh, because everyone is referring their friends and all these other things. So my recommendation to you when you're looking to get a new job or you're struggling to do this is to send connection requests and build relationships with people. And the best thing you can do is not message someone saying, hey, can you refer me? Can I have a job? Instead, you message them and say, hey, can I have 30 minutes of your time? And you ask them a bunch of questions about their job. That does a couple things. One, everyone loves to talk about themselves. So you are able to get someone who's more likely to respond to you because people want to talk about themselves. And two, uh, you're also able to build a warm connection who is more likely to refer you to a job. Think about it this way. If a random person comes up on the street and says, hey, I want to join your team, refer me. That's like what a cold outreach is. That's kind of awkward and kind of weird. But if you have lunch with somebody, you meet them at a party, you maybe hang out, play soccer, whatever with them, that's someone you're more willing to refer for a job. So if you use this connection request or these messages to have some connections to create some relationships, you're able to get a foot in the door and those people can help you get the jobs across the line. Everyone needs a champion sometimes when they're going for a really hard job. And that's my recommendation on how to do that. Uh, we have another question in the chat that says, should I purchase LinkedIn Prime or Gold or whatever it's called if I'm looking for work? It's not called LinkedIn Prime, although that is funny. Shout out to, uh, to Twitch Prime um, or Prime Gaming. Um, LinkedIn Premium, as we call it, is really interesting. And, and um, I think it's a really valuable and useful tool. I use it as well. Um, but it's really useful for a couple of things. One, LinkedIn Premium does include these in-mails that we talk about, these DMs. You get a certain number of them. It also gives you access to search more on LinkedIn. And it also gives you access to a course, uh, a, excuse me, a library of millions of online digital courses that LinkedIn has built out for users. So if you're actively searching for professional development, you wanna make new connections, you wanna learn more, you wanna build your network, LinkedIn Premium is a really good tool for you. And something that I actually use every single day in my job when I'm looking up coworkers. Um, the other benefit of LinkedIn Premium is that it gives you extra statistics about you and your profile who's looking at you, who's searching you, things like that. And that information is really relevant as you start to beef up your profile and make more connections, right? You can see as your profile gets better and as you use the platform more, that more people are looking you up and more people are searching for you. And it's sort of a good way to validate you're doing the right thing. So in my opinion, LinkedIn Premium is very much worthwhile, but ultimately will lead it to other people. Leave it to other people, excuse me. We have another question here that says, I've heard of people that get super mad about people adding them on LinkedIn without knowing them. That's a really good question. Is it really bad to add someone just because you want to stay in touch with them? This is something that is super, super important. I want to really emphasize as we talk about reaching out to folks. Um, LinkedIn has a button when someone ignores your connection request that says, I don't know this person. And if you If you send too many spammy type connection requests, that doesn't make you look good on the platform and the platform doesn't get very happy about that. If you're going to send a connection request to someone you don't know, which by the way, in my opinion, you should always try and see if you have a mutual connection first, maybe a friend of a friend or something like that. If you're gonna do that, you should include a clear and concise note like we have on the slide right here, if you're gonna do that in order to make it more acceptable. I try and respond to every single person who adds a note to their connection requests. And that's one of the things that makes you feel less spammy. It feels more authentic when you send somebody a connection request with an associated note. But again, everything in moderation, everybody, you don't want to send out 500 connection requests. You don't want to send out to everyone in existence. Be thoughtful. Take your time. Do your research. 
figure out who you want to reach out to and why they matter and send those people the connection requests. And I promise you, you'll likely get a response. Let's see here. Um, another question. I am struggling uh, popping my bubble. This is a really good question. Currently, I don't have that many game dev related contacts. How can someone pop this bubble? I love this idea of your sphere of influence in your professional community as a bubble and how you sort of not pop the bubble, but how do you make the bubble bigger a little bit, right? I think the thing is twofold. One is through these types of connection requests, right? Send thoughtful notes to people that help you um, get into conversations with them. The second key is once you have those conversations, spend time preparing. Ask really useful, thoughtful questions. What do you not like about your job? What do you like, do you like about your job? What's the hardest part about your job? What are your career aspirations? Ask really thoughtful questions once you meet somebody new and they'll wanna stay in touch with you. The other thing I'll say is, again, a warm connection is better than a cold connection. So if you have a friend who's related to game dev or who's connected through game dev, uh, ask them to introduce you to someone they know. If you have one of these networking calls with somebody through a connection request, um, you know, at the end of the call, ask them if there's anybody they think you should talk to, right? Feel free to ask people to recommend you so you can build your network and leverage the network of other people. The other thing I'd recommend is uh, I really am a big fan of platforms like Discord and Twitter. I know this group has a really fantastic Discord of which I'm a member where you can connect with other people, right? Where are the places on the internet, even on like Overwatch, whatever, right? Or WoW or whatever games you want to play. Um, you know, where are the places on the internet that the people you want to work with live? Go there, contribute, be a part of the community make questions, excuse me, ask questions, make friends and participate. And that's gonna really help you expand that bubble outwards. Uh, next question. Does LinkedIn prevent folks at your current job from seeing when you're interested in other jobs? That's a bomb question. Uh, LinkedIn has a feature that lets you, I actually, I don't have it on here, but I'll just tell you all about it, that lets you raise your hand and say, I'm interested in looking at new jobs. Uh, and when recruiters are using LinkedIn, they can see that hand raise. They can see what's called interested in new opportunities and whether someone is or isn't. Here's the caveat though. Anyone who works at your company cannot see that. So you are in no danger of raising your hand or saying that you're looking for new work um, on LinkedIn. There should be no retaliation. And if your company retaliates against you for looking for new jobs anyway, maybe you don't wanna work there in the first place. I understand there's of course extenuating circumstances, but no, LinkedIn will not tell your employer when um, when you're looking for a new job. Next question here from one of the mods. What is the best way to tailor your experience in the experience section? Bullet into the point or being more fun and professional? Does it depend what industry you work in? In my opinion, bullets are never the way to go. I can see bullet points on your resume. Give me a little bit more information about you. My, actually as it exists today, my work experience section is intentionally really short because I'm really happy with my job at LinkedIn and I don't really wanna leave and, and, and build it out. But what I would say with someone like Ryan Wyatt, he has a really depth and wide depth and breadth of experience that he's highlighting here. And even if you only had a limited number of experience, talk about what you did, do it in a casual way. I do think things matter a little bit depending on what industry you're in. For example, I love the gaming industry because it's a little more casual and a little more fun. So it's okay to write you know, some things a little bit more casual. You'll see, for example, Chris, who wrote the concise summary that I highlight in this slide, put at the bottom that she loves cats. I think that's cool. I dig cats too, right? If I'm in the gaming industry, I'm be like, oh, Chris likes cats, that's sweet, me too. You know, So it, it does depend on the industry. There are some industries that are more professional, more sort of highbrow, wherever you wanna um, consider it. And you might wanna be more professional there, but especially in an industry like games, it's okay to let your personality come through a little bit. It's kind of what you're trying to do here, right? You're trying to show people who you are with your company. Let's see here, we have another question in the chat. What recommendations do you have for a person pivoting from one industry into the next? What's the best way to optimize your LinkedIn profile to reflect the new industry they're in or wanna be in? That is a super good question and it's something that I think about all the time as someone who works at LinkedIn and might want to work in the gaming industry one day, right? What's tough is if you don't have professional experience, it can be difficult to represent your experiences on your profile. The number one thing I would recommend, do, recommend doing if you're ever trying to do an industry pivot, and this is less related to LinkedIn and more just professional career advice, is finding opportunities to break into that industry through small, tiny things. For example, uh, I was speaking with a producer who runs this Twitch channel, right? 
He's interested in building out a career as a producer in gaming, and he works through this industry, excuse me, this channel as a way to build out his professional experience overall. And he ends up producing uh, opportunities and uh, streams through this channel for like tens of thousands of people, right? So if you can find ways either through mutual friends or through launching side projects or through managing a community like this, um, you know, that allows you to build up that uh, overall experience, that's gonna really help. And the minute you get something that's relevant, get that on your profile. Start to tailor your profile to the job that you want, including the keywords, the job that you want. But it can be really helpful to go and do some of those low lift things, um, you know, in order to do that. That's actually why I got into writing about video games in my free time. So I was like, I work at LinkedIn. I don't work on video games at all, but I love games and I wanna talk about them somehow, right? So that's how I got into writing for this Master of the Meta newsletter, because I thought to myself, writing is a great way to put my name out there and lightly associate myself with games. So if I ever wanna make that pivot, out of the tech industry and into gaming, I can do that a little bit easier. So something to think about, it's a little bit more work. Um, you know, it's the other option of course is reaching out to folks who work in the industry, but I'm telling you, having even a little bit of relevant experience goes a super long way. With that in mind, it looks like I am out of questions in the chat. Um, if anyone has any last minute questions now, feel free to throw them in there and I'm happy to answer them. Um, anything, professional development, career advice, LinkedIn. Uh, happy to sit here for just a minute and answer any last questions. Um, otherwise, we're gonna go ahead and jump into looking at profiles for some of the members of this community um, and uh, go from there. Any last minute questions? Cool. I entered very early when before this started, so yeah. Uh, yeah. No worries, no worries. So I'm pumped to I'm pumped to review your profile with you. I actually going to take a sip of water though, really quick. I just did a lot of talking. Okay. Um, it will be super helpful, Tom, as we review your profile for everybody here. Could you maybe start by giving me a little bit of background on who you are and what it is you want to do, and maybe I can uh, offer some advice on you know ways to make your profile even better. Well, I started um, I. 13 years ago, I started working on television here in Argentina. Uh, yeah. And uh, around uh, five, six years ago, I, I was like uh, very bored with my, my, my career in television. It was like, I worked in broadcast and it was very, very technical, very uh, every day the same. So, and I, I, I'm quite like you, I, I, I love gaming. I love to talk about gaming. So I started to write about gaming. I, I, I started with a, with a YouTube uh, show about the news, uh, we, we, weekly news, uh, that that evolved to a, a news site, uh, and then I, uh, sorry, I am like very a, a little nervous. <laughs> uh, I started. Then I joined another another site called Pressover, and worked there for two years. And, uh, and during those uh, last two years, I started to. Uh, Grow a huge interest in the esports industry. Uh, Got it. Uh, I was yeah, in Argentina. Was grow, growing very fast, very and making a lot of a lot of noise because we had a king uh, in Fortnite. We had a, a 9C in in CS:GO. Uh, so 
and I, and I wanted to be a part of that and got the opportunity to work in comms in so, 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 social media yeah. for LVP, which is a, a Spanish organization that works in here in, in Latin America, uh, being the community manager for their CSGO uh, league. Nice. And around the, that, that was uh, February of 2020. On August of 2020, uh, someone approached me about working for uh, Crew Esports, which, which is uh, Sergio Aguero's uh, esports e organization. Yeah. And from then, I, I started to like full time. I, I decided to leave my my. I still kept my my job on television during during all this time, and up until December, where I decided that it was three works uh, simultaneously was like too much. So <laughs> uh, it was the time to to make the full jump to esports. Yeah. And, yeah. And since then, I, I'm enjoying the my new life in in the esports industry. Yeah, but, no, I to totally totally makes sense about like wanting to make the jump. I get it. Sometimes you're kind of like, I just got to do it. This is like my dream. Yeah. It's like what I want to do. But it's nerve it's nerve wracking. Yeah, it's especially here in in someone asked before about the the economy here in in Latin America. Uh, like that, uh, it's. Uh, always putting you off. You you don't want to risk like your uh, monthly earnings because you don't know what we're having tomorrow. <laughs> so, but yeah, absolutely, yeah. yeah. But I, uh, yeah, sorry. No, go uh, ahead, Tom. Sorry. Right. Right. But I, I had to make the decision. So, especially for my health, because working like I was working, the, the rhythm of work I, I had back then wasn't healthy. I, I stayed up too late. I woke, wake up too too early. So. But I, I'm quite ha I'm quite happy with this. Yeah, I'm not bit, so nice. I'm glad yeah. to hear. It. Um, what what are you yeah. hoping to focus on when we look at your profile here in just a minute? Are you hoping to make it better? Are you looking for a new job? What kind of specific advice are you looking for? Yeah, and my goal is to someday work at a tier one organization like I don't know Fanatic or um, uh, Team Liquid. Uh, and I, there are some some areas I, I believe I, I on my profile I like uh, poor. I, I, the, the summary, for example, is I, I, I don't like it, but I, I don't know how to improve it. So it's like it, I, I found very very hard to to make to, to make that elevator pitch about my, about myself. So uh, especially or, or when I'm in, um, uh, applicating for a job, it's like the cover letters are like hell. So yeah, uh, I too. Oh. Man, I, I remember sending, like, sitting down and writing, like, 30 cover letters in one day. That might be, like, the worst day of my entire life. So <laughs> I totally get it. Um, and, you know, I'm, I, I understand the hype, too. I mean, I have 100 Thieves on hat, right, uh, hat on right now. I'm a huge esports fan as well. I used to play competitive Super Smash Brothers Melee. I wasn't very no. good. Um, so I kind of, I, ret I retired early. We can put it that way. Let's take a look at your profile, though, Tom, and, and let me give you a couple thoughts okay. um, overall here. So a couple things that jump out to me right off the bat. One, your picture, uh, your header picture, and your and your headline, excuse me, are fantastic. You did a really good job here. I know exactly what you're doing. It's a super clear picture. Your picture honestly might even be better than mine. I really like it. Um, and, and I get a sense for like who you are right out of the gate. Um, scrolling down here to your summary, it also is about the right length of what we're looking for. And it tells me what it is you do. You work in visual media. You have keywords in there like OTT and VOD, um, journalism, community management, things like that. The one recommendation I would make about your about or your summary section is maybe to add a line break in there. You'll notice just when you look at sort of four or five lines, it can just be a lot to read. So you want to pretend to yourself that you're someone who doesn't know anything about you. And how can you make it as easy as possible for them to understand who you are? The next thing I want to chat about is you use this featured section, which I actually didn't talk about in my presentation, but this is like a secret LinkedIn pro tip. So I'm, I'm super impressed here. What this featured <laughs> section lets you do is it lets you put forward, for pe people who aren't familiar, lets you put forward the work that you're most proud of. So I used to have links to my writing oh, in there, okay. my newsletters. And so what you have in here, Tom, is a resume. What I would actually recommend is, is there any work that you've done, any um, you know, TV, TV industry work or any community work that you have uh, resources, maybe that's a picture or statistics or presentations or video recordings or YouTube videos. Could you highlight those in there? And the reason I say that is your LinkedIn profile should be able to replace your resume. So you shouldn't need to put your resume on your profile. 
Instead, you could use this space to put the work that you're the most proud of in there. I mean, if you don't have any, the resume is okay too. But in my opinion, it sounds like you've done a lot of really cool, interesting work. So as long as your previous employers or current employers don't have any problems with you sharing um, you know, some content, I think it could be a good place to put some stuff. Yeah, would it be would it be okay to put like um uh, some articles I wrote or yeah even of though course. they are in the in the resume section? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Okay. Uh, no no problem. I mean, um in my opinion, either put them here or put them down in your work experience at the bottom where you can attach stuff. But um okay. overall, in my opinion, I would if I know you can write, I would love to be able to see it as easy as possible, right? If I'm thinking about hiring you. A role that involves writing, so make it super simple for me to be able to do that. Uh, someone asked, "Who's my main in the chat?" By the way, I main Sheik for Super Smash Brothers Melee. Again, not very good, but um, but I try. the The other piece of advice I give you here, Tom, looking at this, is I, I I love how you have your work experience laid out. You have everything on here, and to me, it shows me that you have like a really diverse work experience that uh, is sort of like built out over time. It helps you become a really strong candidate, in my opinion. The thing you're missing, like I just spoke about though, is those work samples. So if you have work samples, link statistics that you can put overall, but I actually think your work experience is, is in a really, really good spot. This is a profile that like says to me, like this person knows how production and like writing and community management works in gaming, because you have so many varied experiences. So this profile feels to me like it's like 99% of the way there, right? Can you add a couple of these things to give people a more holistic view of who you are? And then in my opinion, I think you're in the right place to start messaging people, right? It's better than sending out random cover letters or randomly applying. Can you message people at tier one, tier two organizations on LinkedIn and say, hey, I, can we chat about how you broke in, right? Is there anyone who comes from a similar background as you, similar geolocation? Um, you know, because I th honestly, I think you have like a really good profile. It's just like fantastic. Right, thank so, Thanks. Yeah, absolutely. And, yeah. yeah. Uh, about the yeah. aiming people, I'm like, I always like, I don't know if it's like if it's, uh, too much for the recipient to, uh, I'm like, a, I'm, if I'm, um, a, I don't know how to say it in English, sorry. Uh, I, when I'm contacting someone, when I'm contacting someone with, and I have an intention to learn from them, etc., I don't know if that is like, I, I sometimes feel feel it too, too artificial. It, it's a, yeah. it's a, yeah. So it's like, and that 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 puts me off of sending messages and everything. But uh, I know I have to fight that. But uh, I listen. I totally get it. It feels weird. You're kind of like, talk to me, help me, right? That's why I rec can you make it more natural? It's always nice to find a connection request to somebody. So going back to the example from my presentation. Chris uh, from this organization ha says she likes cats in her profile. Maybe my connection request will be like, oh, no way you, I would love to chat with you about, uh, you know, what it is, the work that you do through this organization. Um, you know, also I love cats too. What kind of cat do you have? You know, can you find some way to make a personal connection request? The other thing I would say is it's just kind of awkward sometimes to put yourself out there. <laughs> like, you know, I'm sitting here like talking to a webcam and things like that. You just got to push yourself to do it because if it works out, you got a new job and you're doing your dream career, right? So sometimes the risk is worth it, even if it can just feel like a little bit outside your comfort. Thank you. Yeah. Do you have any uh, other questions? Uh, I don't think so. It, it was like a, I need to I need I need to make those those corrections and maybe rewrite my about section. Yeah. Yeah. And and I I never understood feature like. Feature was for content. I, I thought it was like, okay, put your resume here for someone to download. So, sure. Yeah, it's great to know that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, no, uh, no problem, Tom. If you want, uh, feel free to send me a connection request. I see some people at the top have already been doing that. Um, and I can take another look at it after you do it. But uh, I'll be honest with you, you should be really proud of yourself. This is like a really good profile. Um, and I think there's like a couple minor things you need to do. And then I think you can start using LinkedIn to help you sort of go after that tier one organization. Uh, so, uh, one question about yeah. uh, this this uh, bilingual uh, profile, Spanish mm -hmm. English. Yeah. Uh, is is there a, a way to write my the same the same profile I did here in, in English but in Spanish, or that's not possible in? So LinkedIn does have the ability to work in multiple languages, um, and my understanding is that it it works on the language of the native speaker. 
Um, I'd have to check up on that for you to be totally honest. Uh, unfortunately, English is English is the only language I speak. Um, so I don't have like a direct answer to that. But overall, I think if you were able to convert the words that you have in English here into uh, Spanish or another language, uh, you still would have like plenty of quality content. So I, I would recommend, you know, maybe just having a friend look at your profile and seeing if it's still in English or if it's translated or not. And worst comes to worst, you could always add like a couple dashes and then maybe put your about profile translated to Spanish below it in case someone, you know, oh, can't yeah. read the English description. Um, so there are ways to sort of get around that if you really need to. Okay. Cool. All right. Well, Tom, it was great to chat with you. Um, I, I think we're going to jump into another profile review here, but feel free to send me a connection request if you want to chat. Perfect. I do it. Thank you. Thank you for your help and, uh, and the chat before. Yeah, of course. Absolutely. Yeah. Hey, Omar, I think might be having a couple mic issues. Just give us a minute here. Omar, what's up? We were able to get you unmuted. How's it going? Hi, it's sorry. It's my first time using Discord. Yeah, no, no worries. I mean, uh, I totally understand. I can tell from your profile it's not your first time using LinkedIn. So I'm glad to no, see No, no, no. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm excited to look at your profile. I, I think a great place to start, Omar. Uh, first off, super cool that you have a PhD and a master's in computer science. I studied computer science in school as well. So um, kindred spirit, but could you maybe start by telling me a little bit about who you are and kind of how, what I can help you with, what you're kind of looking to do? Yeah, just one clarification. My PhD is in experimental psychology. Got it, right. So master's in computer science and PhD in experimental psychology. Apologies. No, don't worry, don't worry. And basically, long story short, I studied computer science. I started working with banks and consulting firms, like uh, boring stuff for me. Mm -hmm. Then I to the master's degree and I went to the this artificial intelligence path uh, focusing on game dev. After that experience I started working with uh, software companies jobs making making games. Mm -hmm. uh, honestly not uh, they weren't uh, good games. <laughs> that's okay. We gotta start somewhere right <laughs> yeah that, 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 that's, that's that's true. And then after that I, I switched to, to psychology just in order to gain understanding about human decision making about the you know league of legends how to how to explore and exploit that kind of uh, intelligence yeah and basically that's my, my got it and and what is it you're hoping to to do omar i see on your profile you're looking to be a game dev or a software dev and um you know, what are you looking for? I, I want to go back to the games industry got it. Um, I think that's a happy problem, but all the offers that I'm, I'm receiving are from the you know, software development for foreign stuff. So yeah. I yeah. to to move a little bit my, my profile just to make it more special, let's say. Got it. Address more the games industry, to, to appeal more to the games Perfect. That makes a ton of sense. Um... Let's let's jump into taking a look at your profile then here. A couple things that I really like out the gate. One, I think your cover photo is super cool. Uh, I'm not sure where you found that, but that's awesome. Uh, a couple other things. Again, like you have some LinkedIn Pro things here that I, I didn't call out, but I'm impressed with. One, you have the open to work 
uh, frame on your profile. And when you go below, you'll see that tiny box, everyone below the word message that says open to work and it says the job titles. What this does for folks, and Omar, I'm sure you're already aware of this, but I'll, I'll tell the stream. What this does is it tells everybody out there who's looking at your profile that you are open to work. Now, this is different than what I talked about earlier, where you're raising your hand to tell your company that you're interested in looking for new jobs or telling recruiters to reach out to you, right? This is a public declaration. But in Omar's case, as he's searching for new opportunities, this is great. Because if I see that he has a PhD in experimental psychology, master's in CS, and is a developer, and that's who I'm looking for, I can immediately tell from his profile that he's someone who's looking for a job. So super good start and glad that you have all of those features on. One thing right out the gate that I maybe make a recommendation on Omar is, is there a picture that you can come up with that has your face more front and center, right? So you'll notice on my profile all the way up in the top right, it's just my face with a white circle. Maybe you can get someone to take a picture with their phone or you put on like a nice shirt or even a t-shirt, right? But is there some way to bring your face front and center so that it's easier for me just by taking a look right away to see you? And I noticed, I think there's a microphone in the picture right now. If you can sort of cut that out and bring yourself front and center, I think that will help a lot. Um, the other thing I would say is, uh, you know, is there any way that you can shorten that headline a little bit? I know you have a PhD, master's in CS and you're a developer. But uh, that information, that's like a lot of characters. And when you're on the LinkedIn news feed, that many characters probably won't pop up all at once. So is there a way you can shorten things down to say software developer, PhD, um, and master's in computer? You know, any, any way, I don't want to minimize your accomplishments because you've done some fantastic things, but just ways that I can get a really quick sense of who you are a little bit faster. And, and you're welcome to take or leave that advice. Frankly, I think your current headline is also very good because you're extremely qualified. But something to think about in the future. Um, let's take a look at your about section. Um, developer with eight years of experience, have a master's. Awesome. This about section, I think, is a really strong start. Again, it's full, chock full of keywords, art, computer science, human behavior, game programming, server-side programming. These are tons of things that are really valuable. What I would ask is, is there any way that you can expand this out a little bit more? Because I know you've done more than just eight years of professional experience. Can you add another paragraph about the types of games that you've built, the types of work that you've done, right? Um, you know, for example, if you've built, if you're used to building free to play mobile games that go out to 2000 users or 2000 players, can you make that distinction and add some numbers in more detail for it so that's easier for me to understand the kind of work that you've done? That'll make it easier if I'm a recruiter to understand whether or not you're a good fit for my job. Does that make sense? Yes, yes, it does. Thank you. Do you. Yeah, do you have any questions before I jump down to your job experience? Mm, yeah, uh, well, no, you know, my questions, uh, I'm sure they will be about the professional experience and the project. Okay, great. Let's jump down to that and then we can keep going. Um, okay, thank you. Couple of thoughts here. I'm just taking a look. Um, one, great job again. Um, I like how filled out this is. Um, and I like the level of detail that you're going to, and I really like that you have these trailers and these media experiences in here, especially for game dev. That's the best way to represent yourself. And it looks, even if we're looking at your profile, you look super legit. You have a PhD, you have a master's, and you have all this game work experience. That's super legit to me. Now, a couple pieces of feedback I give you. One is there are a lot of work experiences in here, so it's difficult for me to understand what's relevant and what's not. If you're looking to work in the game development industry, can you tailor your work experience, which is great that you've worked on so many things, a little bit more specifically to games? What on here matters and is gonna make you look like a better candidate for me when I'm looking at game development? Um, you know, programming, lead programmer on games, working at hollow games, those are things that I'm gonna see, or and smart games as well. Those things I'm gonna see, that's like, this person is a killer candidate, but um, some of these other experiences might be a little less relevant. I just want, the work experience to make it as easy as possible for me to understand. So I know I said add as much work experience as you can, but you also do want to be targeted with the kind of content that you put on your profile. To make sure that if some random person who has the dream job and is recruiting looks at your profile, they can really quickly get a sense of who you are. Does that make sense? Yes. And um, well, I think that the, my idea behind this kind of um, this thing is that usually you you need to craft a cover letter, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm using just a link it in like the this like the original background, the original experience, and then in the cover letter, I'm addressing each occasion. So Got it. 
to handle that. Yeah, I think that makes sense. In an ideal world, though, wouldn't it be great if we didn't have to write? I hate cover letters personally. Wouldn't it be great if we didn't have to write cover letters and your LinkedIn could accurately represent the cover letter a little bit more, right? I think about the the length of work, the length of the descriptions of your work experience is about right. But can you find a way so that you know I could you could bypass the cover letter overall and I could really quick, like a really fast uh, sense, understand who you are. Um, you know, and then you can double down on that even more in the cover letter. So what you maybe would have spent time writing about in the cover letter before is now on your LinkedIn profile, and you can spend the rest of the cover letter focusing on more specific. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Got Thank it. You. Got it. Yeah. Um, again, really loved your media examples uh, as well. Looking for a couple other things here. Um, love the description that you added to your education, particularly the call out of who you worked under for your thesis. Um, Mad props to you. Again, on having a PhD, that's incredibly impressive. Uh, let's see what else here. I like that you have your license and certification as well uh, for Java programming. I used to study computer science as well. I was did program in Java. I wasn't particularly good at it though. Um, and I also like that you have your skills section down here. These show the things that you care about, plus your your projects and your accomplishments like that. So overall, Omar, I think this is a really strong profile. I think my biggest piece of advice again would be sort of condensing. Uh, turning it from like a CV sort of thing into like a really condensed profile so that you can send it out to people who work at the places you want to work and let them understand who you are really fast and get them to get back to you, answer even more quickly. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have any other questions before we jump to the next person? Um, just the last uh, the, of the question is, how do you handle when you are with, I work for a bad game. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's, it's good to, I mean, it's related to, with the portfolio thing. It's good to put your bad, uh, your bad example of work. Yeah. Oh, so you're asking, should I put my bad stuff on there, or just the best stuff? Exactly. Got it. Yeah. Here, here's my take. Everyone has to start somewhere, right? It, I like I mentioned, I write about video games in my free time. I went back the other day and read the first thing I ever wrote. And I was literally pulling my hair out. It was so bad. It was almost unreadable, right? But it was my first step. And especially when you're trying to break into an industry, being able to show that you've increased your skills over time is really valuable, right? So maybe you focus in and you just have your game development experience on here. And you show, here's the first thing I worked on, the second thing, the third thing. You'll be able to see, you, you've like grown. I know how programming works. You, you've grown as a designer and as a developer and as a game programmer, right? Your products are gonna, each one's gonna be better than the last. So in my opinion, be proud of those first projects um, and put them out there overall because they're showcasing who you are and, and what you could do at the time and, um, and the relevant work experience, right? And shows that you can learn, in my opinion, if you're getting better over time, shows that you can come in and try your best and, and self-manage and then, and then get better over time. So that's my take on that. You should be proud. Thank you. Thank you. And also thank you for your talk. Yeah, absolutely. Great, it was awesome to talk to you. We're gonna go ahead and pull up our next uh, person here. Last person in our last profile review of the day. Uh, we actually have the producer behind this stream, the person who's been making this whole thing working uh, and has worked with me for weeks on end to make sure we can get this presentation right. Uh, Zoram, how's it going? Yo, 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 what's popping? It's going, the stream's going. We at Linux and Gaming have been putting in work and, you know, going next soon. Yeah. We have a lot of uh, panels, webinars, and, you know, a big agenda coming up for the rest of this month. So stay tuned and follow us, you know, on Twitter and what, you know, all that. Yeah, yeah, of course. No, I 
huge shout out to Latinx and Gaming Group for being able to put this on. Um, I've worked with this group a bunch of times before, and y'all are like some of the best professional development and just like online gaming goodness and community that I've seen. Um, and you're killing it with the stream production, so good job. Hell yeah, thank you. So let's uh, let's kill my profile real quick. Yeah, yeah. I, it, I I already took a look at it earlier, so I'm sure it's good. But for the people uh, for people on the stream, could you tell us a little bit more about like who you are, what you do, and what it is you're trying to do with your career? Uh, so I recently, I know the person before has got a master's and a PhD and a bachelor's. And <laughs> I don't have either of those either. It's okay. <laughs> I recently got my bachelor's from San Francisco State University, uh, broadcasting yeah. and electronics communication arts. So just, uh, you know, looking for work, you know, in the studio, I want to press some buttons, um, you know, uh, you know, press some buttons, maybe be on air, everything in between, behind the camera, lighting, um, and yeah, I'm open to work. Yes, yes. Got yes. it. Is there, um, is there anything in particular you've done in the production field before that might be worth talking about? Uh, I've worked at, uh, volunteer at Gameheads. They teach students how to video game develop. I put on their streams nice. and... I worked at the Oakland Esports Arena at their studio for the streams. Um, I've done a lot of video videography. I push content for that organization, and then here at Linux and Games, we uh, we promote and we put these streams on and make some highlights and you know just push a platform for all the other folks that you know want to get exposed and whatnot. Yeah, of course. What Zorm's not telling everybody on the stream is that he produced a stream with like twenty thousand viewers on it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Very cat, very casual about that. I I don't even know if I met twenty thousand people in my entire life. So, just saying, big deal on stream right now. Let's uh let's jump into your profile uh super quick and we can explore what we got here. Um, first off, couple call outs. Great profile picture. I think it does a really good job. I'm, you know, I'm gonna send you a connection request right now, oh. and I'm gonna add a note. <laughs> Stay <Let's>... connected. <laughs> um, uh, this profile picture does a great job representing who you are and your personality. And the cover photo does the exact same thing. So I think you got it. You're killing it overall. One thing I'm gonna notice though is that you don't have a headline. It just says you live in the San Francisco Bay Area, which is where I used to live. So it's a bummer. I just moved away. We could have hung out, Damn. but. No, no headline overall. Is that just is that just because you're you're sort of on the hunt, or what do you think? I I, I just I probably just didn't know that feature existed until <laughs> today. So the headline. Yeah. Put headline. All good. Add a head, yeah, add a headline, and and I know you you said you're working for production, uh, content and looking for production jobs in gaming, right? Go ahead and add like uh you know lead producer or whatever, however you identify your title. It looks like down here you're a broadcast technician at Latinx and gaming, right? I mean, this is a legitimate okay. organization. We have hundreds of people on the stream. I think you should give yourself some love there. Um, okay. The other thing I would say to you, people you may not look for, the other thing I would say to you is, I, I love the start of your summary. It's a good couple sentences, um, and it tells me a little bit about who you are, but I think you could do more here, right? I think this could be twice the length, and I think you could fill this with more information. But I, what I'm getting the sense is I kind of get that you do broadcasting and I get that you work with game heads and Latinx and gaming, but as someone who has tried to run my own stream before, there is way more technical things that you're not giving yourself credit for, including like overlay design, uh, like management direction, like all, all of these things on the stream that you're managing that uh, have all these like special terminologies and phrases, right? So I would recommend if I was you, expand this out a little bit more. Talk about Latinx and gaming. Say, you know, I've produced streams for tens of thousands of people and call out some of those specific skills and software that you know how to use. OBS, right? Uh, Twitch channel management, things like that. I don't really know how to produce, so I'm trying to sound like I know what I'm talking about. Okay. But, um, you know, any keywords that you know are like a big deal for you and the job that you do. All right, sweet. Taking notes, put some keywords. Yeah, absolutely. Like stuff. Okay. I, uh, I like that you have the featured section here as well. Uh, what what is this site? Is this just like a portfolio? Uh, it's a portfolio of some videos I've produced. Yeah, and some of these videos I'm interviewing folks or cool. yeah, so it looks very cool. Big. Cool. So and do you have any of those videos down here? Okay, it looks like not. No. What I would recommend to you, first off, I think it's a, it's cool and it's a good call to put your portfolio in the featured section. Um, it can direct people. You know, if you have a more creative role and LinkedIn isn't doing a good job representing, I can direct people to the right place. Uh, but I would recommend putting VODs, putting screenshots. Someone screenshot this right now, actually. Clip this right now. We can put this on yeah. Instagram profile. Uh, put, uh, put clips and, and videos and everything on your profile underneath your work experience because you've worked in something that has an AV 
uh, type of asset, and that's going to be the most valuable for expanding out your LinkedIn profile. Okay, okay. And I should probably put like a description right there next to uh, Lennox. Yeah, yeah, that is the that is the other thing I would say. I would add a description to the Latinx and gaming group. Again, talk about what kind of software you use, what kind of reach you have, how many people you work with. I'm happy to take a look at it once you get something in there, but um, I think that's a great way to do it. I love what you have for game heads. Uh, oh, it's long. Okay, cool. We'll talk about this in a second. I love the opening sentence that you have for game heads because it tells me about what game heads is, but now I'm seeing broadcaster and video producer. This looks like bullet points that you just copied and pasted from your resume. I'm, I'm, so... Yeah, Damn, so you're good at this. My so. Rec <laughs> I've seen a couple profiles. My recommendation for you is how can we turn those bullet points into sentences, right? So for example, you have a bunch of bullet points for broadcaster and a bunch of bullet points for video producer. First off, let's take those bullet points for broadcaster and put them under the broadcaster description we have down here at the bottom, right? So that way things are delineated by each job that you've had. Then let's turn those bullet points into descriptions, right? So I'm gonna take a look at the broadcaster one. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make something up on the spot. Um, work with Game Heads to broadcast the annual Game Heads annual showcase, which went live to 600 people consisting of live presentations, audience, and DJs. Built a technical production plan alongside one of Oakland's biggest game, one of California's biggest gaming uh, venues, the Oakland Esports Arena. Directed, produced, and run the show while managing a team of eight people. Right, like you see, you see how like kind of smooth that rolls off the tongue, um, comparatively. Yeah, yeah. It it sounds like you're talking to somebody and when yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly, okay. exactly, exactly. Um, and again, would add uh, that you have tons of great experiences here, but turning these from bullet points into sentences is going to be the best bet, um, especially for like gamers edu. If you can add a couple things, helpful. I'll give you like one example. The one of the first like real, real jobs I ever had. I used to like shovel snow and like rake leaves and do all this stuff as a kid. Was um, I worked at a startup that made websites for furniture companies called FurnitureDealer.net. And like, it's really hard to write. I learned so much about furniture. My job was like learning about furniture, right? And like, it's like, oh, how do I write that? How do I put that in my profile, right? I was still able to turn the fact that I like built out websites about rugs, you know, into a couple sentences. So even if you think like, um, you know, whatever the work I did at some organization isn't worth it, like as long as it relates overall to the story you're trying to tell, um, you know, like a director assistant, production assistant, keep it on there and add a couple sentences. Okay, okay. Cool, 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 cool. Um, what else we got? I like your skills. Shout out San Francisco State University. That's a great school. Um, and you actually have something on here I didn't know if I was going to see, and I'm super happy about it. You have a recommendation. So for people who aren't aware, LinkedIn has a recommendation feature that lets you, people you worked with write nice things about you on your profile. And that's like the best feeling ever because one, it's cool when people say nice things about you. And two, when someone's looking to hire you, um, People will go and look at your profile and see sparkling recommendations from people. So if you're ever leaving a job and you're leaving on good terms, it could be a good idea to ask someone to write you a recommendation, right? It seems like on your profile, you have someone you worked with at SFSU to improve student life, organize students, right? Like that's a nice recommendation and says to me, like, this guy is not all talk based on his profile. Like he is about like everything he says he's about. Okay. Okay. That's good. That's good. Yeah. I saw that one day and I just accepted it. I wasn't sure what where it was going to pop up. Cool. Right well, then shout out, shout out to, to Anna, yeah. Anna Navarro then for, for hooking up with the recommendation. But you, um, you, know, you can actually actively request people you've worked with. So like every time I leave a job, I send a, a request for a recommendation to a manager. And usually they ask you to write one back. You can give recommendations as well. It doesn't look like you've given anyone yet. <laughs> so you know, hopefully it's to someone you enjoyed working with. Other, otherwise, maybe it's not worth, uh, not worth writing the recommendation. But uh, I've had that happen to me a couple of times. So I'm like, write a recommendation about me. And I'm like, mm, I really like working with you. So I'm not going to do that. Uh, but it's a, it's a good move overall. Um, otherwise, man, great profile. Um, do you have any specific questions that I can answer for you? Um, yeah, I was um, wondering, what should we be posting and sharing? Um, what's like, I... I like comedy, but I don't know if LinkedIn is like the comedy platform. Yeah, 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 right, right? Okay. yeah, that's a good, yeah, that's um, a good one. Uh, I see, I see on here you have some activity. You've been posting some Latinx and gaming stuff. Uh, we can click on one of your posts right now, actually, which features yours truly. 
Um, you went ahead and shared the group's page, which everyone should go follow, like I just did right now, Latinx and Gaming, on LinkedIn. Who is that? Um, Max Lowenthal. Um, <laughs> uh, my recommendation is to share a couple things. One, you did this is great. When you're associated with an organization, you're doing a speaking engagement, it's really awesome to share things related to that organization. Everyone in your network is um, A couple other things I see people post on LinkedIn a lot are announcements around new jobs or professional development. If you have like a big professional milestone, right? Like, hey, last night I got on stream and talked about my LinkedIn profile in front of like 150, 200 people, right? Like that's a professional thing to share. I don't think me, in my personal opinion, you want to keep a professional memes, comedy, things like that uh, are generally less successful on LinkedIn. But if you can post things, you know, about mentors, about events that you've attended, things like that, everything in a professional context, that's going to be a good win for you. Um, and then someone like me will come and like it. And then everyone in their network will get to see it. Okay, sweet. All right, dope. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah. A feature that I saw one day on Google was that LinkedIn is working on like a live streaming platform. You can stream onto LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. How is that being developed? How do you, where do you see it going? Or what's yeah, that's doing? a that's a good question. Classic. The producer who works on live streams wants to know about live streams. Um, yeah, we do have a live streaming feature. It's in the process of being rolled out overall. It's called LinkedIn Live. Um, I, I have kind of limited information about that. What I would say is it's uh, imagine like a professional like context for live streaming. So on Twitch, we're going to see like just chatting and playing games. On a LinkedIn live, you're going to see something like the presentation we're doing right now. Professional development, maybe a company will host like a big event like Connexion or something like that um, and share it with the broader public. Um, so overall, I think you should be thinking about LinkedIn as almost like a professional live streaming platform. Um, what I will say is like the product is still in development, so it's like not without bugs, but it's another great way to build out your brand. And um, I know we're rolling it out slowly to users over time. So if you don't see it right now, give it a little bit. I think we're continuing to fix the bugs and, and you'll be able to work on it soon. All right, dope. Thank you. That's That was my last question. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, with that in mind, uh, I'll go ahead and sign off with everyone here. Thank you to everybody who is still tuned in uh, to checking out everything about LinkedIn. Thank you to Latinx and, Game, uh, and Gaming for setting up this week and, excuse me, this month of awesome webinars and for inviting me to come speak. If y'all want to come find me, you can find me on Twitter at Max Lowenthal. Um, you can read some of my writing about games at masterthemeta.com. Um, and everyone, feel free to shoot me a connection request on LinkedIn. Uh, if you want to connect more, I'm happy to help anybody with the professional platform. Catch y'all later. Bye.